Hey folks, Carl Kischel here, and welcome to this edition of the Microsoft Cloud News Update, researching the cloud blog so you don't have to. So this week we have a few announcements to share with you, first of which is a new data center region uh, in Azure, uh, based in Arizona. Talk a little bit about that. Some additional free resources that are now available with the Azure free account. So Microsoft Teams roadmap updates, an update on Defender, and much more. So with that, let's jump into it. All of this week's updates, the links to which all the posts I'll be talking about can be found in the description of this video. So the first update here is regarding a new Azure region um, based in Arizona, and it's a sustainable data center. And this blog post talks about uh, some good backgrounder on the data center and uh, what went into the creation of the data center, which is located right outside of, uh, of Phoenix uh, in Goodyear, Arizona. And um, some of the backgrounders on the sustainability goals that they had, costs, uh, et cetera. So pretty interesting background if you wanted to learn a little bit more about how this data center be, uh, came to fruition. In terms of the impact on cost, Going to click over here to the Azure cost calculator. And um, if you let's do a, an example here regarding a storage account. So do block blob storage, fairly straightforward and simple. See all the different regions here in the US. So um, uh, West US, which is based uh, somewhere in California, you see for this particular block storage blob um, around $21 a month. Uh, US West 3, which is that new data center, same cost. So no really difference in cost. Your, your actually your best cost is going to continue to be West US 2 um, for, from, from a costing perspective. And uh, West US 2 is based somewhere in the state of Washington. But I wanted to share with you the impact of this new data center, um, where the geography is and some of the options you have for your Azure resources. Five more free services available with the Azure free account. So you may be familiar with the Azure free account. There'll be a link right here to click on and sign up for your free Azure account. And uh, traditionally, a lot of these free services have been focused on application development. There are some additional services that have been added, as the blog post says, five. They include Azure Database for PostgreSQL, um, same thing for MySQL, Azure Key Vault, Azure Logic Apps, uh, Media Services Encoding, and so on. I think the addition of Azure Logic Apps is probably the more interesting piece here to check out. So if you don't have an Azure account, Click on the link to get started today. Up next, we have a few Microsoft Teams roadmap updates. The first of which here is this new option to have auto recording. So it's currently in development, uh, should be released in your tenant at any time. So be on the lookout for this. And basically when you set up a Microsoft Teams meeting, you'll have an option to automatically record that meeting as you're setting up your meeting request and some of the, the, the meeting settings. So be on the lookout for this, very handy. If um, you often forget to record a meeting that should be recorded, have that turned on up front. And as soon as you start the meeting, the meeting will record. Another Microsoft Teams roadmap update. And this is regarding streaming support for the RTMP protocol. And uh, by providing this streaming support, which is currently in development, should see it next month. You can connect Microsoft Teams to different uh, streaming services. So allowing larger audience to participate as endpoints to your Microsoft Teams meetings. This next update is regarding Microsoft Defender for Office 365 and a first contact safety tip. So this is currently in development, should see this any moment. Um, and this will provide you with um, and your end users with a, a line of text in your emails saying, hey, you normally don't see email from this person. 
uh, you know, click here to learn why it's important. So if this is a first time email being sent uh, from a particular recipient that normally don't, doesn't correspond to your end user or mailbox within your environment, they'll see this particular message as a tip within the body. So it's, it will be shown in the first line of an email message. So if I shut down an Azure virtual machine, am I still being billed for it? And this blog post covers um, the backgrounder to the answer of that question. And I'll get right to it. Yes, you would be still billed for this virtual machine, even though you've shut it down. And the reason being, as the blog post gets into some details, is that it's still taking up uh, hardware allocation within the data center and preventing other people from using it. So that's kind of on, on a hard reserved type of status within the data center, even though it's uh, shut down and not really consuming or performing any kind of processing power. So this blog post gets into the details of that, uh, the different statuses of a, of a virtual machine, basically running stopped or deallocated. So uh, the first running self-explanatory virtual machine is up and working and running. You're seeing billing for that. Um, in a stopped state, the virtual machine is not um, performing any tasks, but the uh, hardware that it's taking up within the data center, the underlying hardware still being consumed and unavailable to others. So yes, your virtual machine is still billed for. It's not until you release the VM and put it in a deallocated state where there is no billing allocated to that. So if you have some virtual machines um, that you're really not sure if you should completely delete, um, but you're not currently running and maybe they're in a stop state, deallocate them so you can free up some resources. And our last update is concerning Microsoft Defender Security Insights and having that available within Azure Sentinel. So the blog post gets into Microsoft Secure Score and the analytics and the data that's behind that and gets into a use case of funneling the Secure Score data into Azure Sentinel so you have an overall security posture and visibility of your environment. And uh, the uh, secure score idea and all the details are here in the blog post, but specifically, if you scroll down, gets into some of the details on how to implement secure score data into Azure Sentinel. And uh, the, the two big steps that are required, which are number one, uh, choosing your consumption model and all the details behind that. So uh, there are different things to think about regarding this service to service authentication model, uh, APIs, et cetera. So you wanna read through that first if this is something you wanna do. And then second of all, registering your application in Azure Active Directory so you can call on the APIs to funnel that data back into Sentinel. So all the information on how to do this is completely um, outlined here in this blog post. And that concludes this edition of the Microsoft Cloud News Update. Hope you enjoyed this week's session. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you want to keep up to date when we release these uh, weekly updates, uh, please subscribe. Again, give me a like. Uh, if you have any comments or feedback, drop a comment in the comment box. I do review all comments. You can also find me on Twitter and or LinkedIn at Carl Kischel. Definitely read all comments. Appreciate any kind of feedback you give me. Um, don't forget to share this as well with your colleagues and other folks. So again, hope everyone is really well. Um, I bid you the best. Uh, this weekend is uh, the Father's Day weekend here in the U.S. So happy Father's Day to all the dads. And we will catch you next time. Take care.